What I want to do in this video is give an overview of the endomembrane system in eukaryotic cells. Endo, endomembrane system. And at a very high level, the endomembrane system is all of the, 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 the membranes that interact with each other inside of a cell. So what membranes are we talking about? Well, you could start off by talking about the cell membrane itself. And all of these membranes, these have bilayers of phospholipids. I sometimes my brain malfunctions and I call them bilipid layers. But these are bilayers of phospholipids. So if I were to zoom in right over here, if I were to zoom in right over there, that line, It really is a bilayer, a bilayer of phospholipids. So it would look like this. So you have your hydro, hydrophilic heads pointing outwards and your hydrophobic tails pointing inwards. So hydrophilic heads pointing outwards, hydrophobic tails pointing inwards, and it keeps going. So you have, if we think of it from left to right, you have a layer of two, or you have a bilayer, I should say, of phospholipids. That's going to be true of the cellular membrane. That's going to be true of this, of the outer nuclear membrane right over here. We drew this one on the video on the endoplasmic reticulum. And so over here, you see these two membranes. You might say, okay, is this a bilayer? No, this is actually two. two bilayers. So this membrane right over here is has a phospholipid bilayer and this membrane over here also has a phospholipid bi a phospholipid bilayer. This the one let me do this in another color. This one that I'm starting to starting to trace in magenta, that's the outer membrane of the nuclear envelope and it's continuous. It's continuous with the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum which I'm starting to highlight right over here. And then the one that I'm highlighting in this purple color, in this purple color, this is the inner membrane of the nuclear envelope. And all of this is part of the endomembrane system. So I already just I've already started talking about the endoplasmic reticulum and we go into some depth on that on the video on the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi apparatus but it's also part of the endomembrane system and in, in the endoplasmic reticulum in particular can represent up to or even more than 50% of the membrane associated the phospholipid membrane associated with the cell And we've talked about what goes on in the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum. So this area right over here, right over here, we've talked about what happens there. Proteins can get synthesized. Actually other molecules like lipids can get synthesized there. They can and then they can go to the smooth ER and then the place where they can exit from the smooth AR and we saw that in the video on the endoplasmic reticulum how they can kind of butt out. We call this area it's often called the transitional ER. So this area right over here, we would call the transitional endoplasmic reticulum. Transitional. 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 Transitional ER is this place where these proteins are being butted off and they're butting off in vesicles. So this is the transitional ER. And all vesicles are are little small compartments that have a membrane around it that things like a protein can be transported in. And not, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but all of these lines that I'm drawing, even though I drew it as a single line, these are phospholipid bilayers. So the membrane might be different. The phospholipid bilayers might be different when we go from one piece of the membrane to another, but they all have that same general notion of having this, this, this bilayer of phospholipids. But just as a review, these proteins, they can, they, can, they can emerge from the transitional ER. They can make their way to the Golgi apparatus. And we've already talked about how in the Golgi apparatus, apparatus these these proteins can be matured and when i say being matured there's a bunch of enzymes in here there's a bunch of golgi enzymes in here that can do all sorts of things to the proteins tag them they can actually they can actually add 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 saccharides to them so that they they become glycoproteins they can tag them so they can be used in the cellular membrane or be used outside of the cellular membrane or to be used other places in the cell so for example this protein right over here it butted off as a as a as a vesicle it makes its way to the golgi apparatus 
The membrane can then merge and dump the protein into the Golgi apparatus. From there, it can be matured. It may, might turn into a glycoprotein. Who knows what happens to it? And then it could butt off again. And then this protein that's now butted off, it could go to be embedded into the cellular membrane. The protein could be excreted from the cell, or it could go to other parts of the cell. Now, those aren't everything I've just talked about. Those aren't the only parts of the endomembrane system. You have things like vacuoles, which are membrane-bound organelles in a cell. In plant cells, a vacuole can be used for storage. It could be used for structure. Vacuoles can get quite large, and they can actually give kind of the structure of the actual plant. In animal cells, In animal cells, you might have something called a lysosome. And a lysosome is a membrane-bound structure where essentially things go to, for the most part, be, be recycled or to be, to be torn apart. So you know, maybe something got packaged from someplace. This is some molecules over. Let me do this in another color. You have some, and I drew that vesicle a little bit too big. But maybe this stuff, it needs to be destroyed. So this membrane is going to, it can then merge with that membrane and dump its contents and then dump its contents in here. And this has a very low, this has a low pH, and it can actually kind of break apart this stuff, and it can digest this stuff and recycle it into its kind of, I guess you could say, more constituent material. So all of this is part of the endomembrane system. So once again, hopefully it gives you an appreciation for how complex and on a lot of levels beautiful cells can be.